And the fat tire folder segment, Vitalon i7 Pro is my favorite model so far with the best performance when it comes to torque and top speed in under $1,500 price range. I have something really exciting for you today. This is the new Vitalon T7 model. I had it for several weeks and this bike is fantastic. Just look at this frame. This chameleon paint is phenomenal. The frame construction is really well made. If you remove the front fork and the wheels, this frame alone with more high-end components installed, it's way more capable. And it has so much more potential here. But before we get into details and closer looks, let's go over the specs. This model comes with 750 watt rear hub motor, peak power delivery 1200 watts and we'll test that and see how it performs. Vitalon, I think it's time for at least 1000 watts motor here. The battery is removable, 48 volt, 20 amp hour, 960 watt hour capacity with Samsung cells, which is great. And also I would like to see this model in version of 52 volt variation with 1000 motor kit. Dual suspension and this shock looks like an upgraded version. The bike weighs 79.2 pounds, total weight capacity 330 pounds. Top speed. We have five levels of assist. They kept the same DNA as the previous i7 Pro model, but here we have more power, more torque, much faster acceleration. And it's even faster if you assist. This is a class three bike restricted to 28 miles an hour. Even if you push really hard, you cannot pass the speed limit. Unless you go in advanced settings and you have the password to remove it. Range test. As always, maximum speed level with assist. The system is so powerful, it gains speed so much faster, so much more torque that I don't think I really contributed by pedaling. And I was pushing medium to very light level. I was able to cover 28.8 miles in range. For this bike size, for this weight, I think this is impressive. In the third or second speed level, if you assist, you'll really see the difference and you'll gain more range. And the fourth and fifth level, it's so much more power that pedaling doesn't really help, I think. Now also, in the city, you stop at light so many times, if you ride in the bike lanes or trails for a longer period of times without stopping, you'll get much higher numbers. If you ride at 27, 20 miles an hour, I don't think pedaling really increases the range and helps here. Size. It is a massive 26-inch fat tire e-bike, but from axle to axle, it is a shorter base and smaller triangle frame makes it nimble and agile when you have that crazy torque applied with fast speed, but at the same time comfortable and maneuverable on the throttle. Suspension. This frame has enough travel to tackle off-road well. You can adjust the level of travel, also lock it and make it a hot tail. The shock has three adjustment positions. The rear shock, it's soft and very responsive. This is a better shock compared to all other fat tire e bikes I've tried so far. You have this valve here, you can pump more air or reduce based on your weight and travel needs. The front suspension only has two inches of travel, slightly noisy and rebound back up. It's a basic entry level suspension. Overall, not bad. This dual suspension can tackle some off road pretty well. If you look at the linkage here that connects, you know, the frame to the suspension, to the shock, there's nothing excessive, there's no extra stuff here. They're, you know, properly done. And I like transition here to the rear triangle. You see how nicely it's done. It's not too bulky. It's not overdone like Hemiway and other brands that I reviewed in the past. Nicely done and everywhere, perfect welds. See, there's no excess. So they kept the frame light and uh, functional. Here you can, you know, have four inch tires and also put 3.5, three inches. We can get the dropper post, so a lot of things can be done here. It's not super soft, like, like the Fox or the Rock Shocks, but it's better than any other shock I tested in the previous bikes. You can upgrade here and get a very expensive one between, let's say, $275 to $500 and make this frame perform exceptionally well. You have here adjustability and preload adjustments, so again, Nothing fancy, just basic stuff, but if you upgrade with Fox 38 or Fox 36 or any, you know, Z, for example, the one I have on my Santa Cruz, this frame will perform amazingly well. It has good geometry. The seat post, the stock one came very short. I got a longer one, so when you place your orders, if you do, make sure you mail the company and ask for a longer seat post, depending on your height. The frame on this bike is just beautiful. This paint, and the dark has this color, and the sunlight, this is how it looks. And it is a chameleon paint, and it's so well done. I like the grips, leather, comfortable, you know, standard stuff, hardware on both sides to secure them. We have the horn here on the bottom, pretty loud good console 
And I like the screen. This is something new, looks different, and there's a lot of settings here I'll show you in a moment. Here we have nice shifter, twist throttle, Tektro hydraulic brakes, the same as the Super Saiyan 3. I like these levers, they're actually shorter. We can use two or even one finger, plenty of space, very comfortable. The cables here in the front, wrapped, uh, you know, not bad. You can do a better job here. They're nicely hidden the frame on both sides. Big lights, bigger than the motorcycle light and the, a really big uh, horn here underneath. Massive for this frame. We'll check at night and see how powerful the light is. Big chain ring, only one-sided. Eight-speed cassette, Alto Shimano shifter, 180 mil rotors, two piston brakes. I hope they offer the same version with the mid-drive and upgraded fork. The same fork that actually Kimoe Cobra has it will be perfect to have that fork here. That's more advanced. Uh, I think that fork is about 500 uh, to 475, 450. Putting that fork here will make a big difference. This bike will be much more playful, more travel in the front, uh, more disability. I think it's about four to five inches, so it makes the bike more capable. Unfortunately, we don't have quick release axle on this model. It would be nice to see that here. On the handlebar, clean setup, good quality parts. The screen is colored, good size, well displayed information, good menu with various adjustments, easy to read even on a sunny day. Hill climbing, does a decent job, just on the throttle, on a long hill, started at the base at 23 miles an hour and climbed all the way to the top, just dropping to 20 miles an hour and maintaining speed, which is not bad. Lights. So it is powerful, has a lot of throw, but not uh, too wide of a spill. It's just focused in the front. Hope you guys can see in the camera. It's not bad, but I wish it had more angle to the sides. It's mostly throw up front. We don't have a rear light, just the reflector. And here's the front look of the light. I like the Vitalan logo in the front. Really big light. It looks like it can output more for its size. I found the really cool trails near GW Bridge in New York City. So we took the CYC 5 kilowatt mid-drive Santa Cruz, which is completed, and the T7 to test them out. These trails are pretty gnarly, and the Santa Cruz has 180 millimeters of travel in the front with the Z Ultimate front fork and 170 millimeters in the rear with the Fox Float X2, which gives you a new level of control and performance to every terrain imaginable. The T7 is a bit noisy, but handled the trails pretty well. I was surprised. I mostly looked to see if T7 would be able to climb and managed to get around the trails, and it did it pretty comfortably. The way it comes set up, it's a pretty capable bike. So I like this uh, T7 logo here and looking from the top how the frame tapers from uh, wire to narrow, really nice transition. You have to see this in person. This frame, it is phenomenal, looks really good and I feel like you replace the front fork for time, you know, you save some more money and you after upgrade the shock and this will be an amazing off-road bike. If you do, you know, nothing technical, just regular, you know, trails in a forest or just, you know, regular biking, the way it comes, it's perfect. It's, uh, you know, for average rider, this is a very good setup. I spoke with Vitalan team and they told me that the rear rack and the tail lights will be provided for free with each order, which is awesome. They will also include a longer seat post option complimentary. But the most importantly, they will upgrade the rear and the front shocks in the near future with more advanced options. This is so cool. This frame deserves better. I was able to tackle those trails so well, so comfortably. Very soon, this bike will do so much better. I like the powerful start and aggressive acceleration that Vitalan sets on all of their e-bikes. For 1900 US dollars, this is a good all around off-road setup. The link will be down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.